Hey guys, um, uh, Tin Man here. Um, yeah, I'm going crazy today, going live tries. Um, so, uh, if you have watched my earlier uh, live, uh, you know that uh, uh, it was sunset, right? So right now, what, what time is it right now? Let me just see, I can't see it, but it's probably about um, 20 minutes away, uh, 20 minutes after sunset. So, um, so look at that. <laughs> so I'm uh, kind of in the wilderness right now. Uh, and, uh, and this is my uh, knee pad, of course, very important because uh, there's always the, the plants that is uh, uh, gonna hurt you and uh, this is my lens right here. So, um, so I want to share with you uh, one tip um, that uh, <laughs> uh, about low-life photography. So um, uh, when, when I went out to take photos before, um, what happened was that um, uh, uh, what happened was that when uh, photographers see, uh, saw that the sun is setting and all, they usually pack up uh, probably about 15 minutes, uh, 30 minutes before sunset. And because the light is low, right, and then everybody uh, felt that uh, the light is gonna be crappy, right? That's what they said, and then they, they leave, right? But uh, for me, I always stay um, after sunset. Uh, why? Because um, uh, just, let, let me just show you. Uh, like for example, if you look here, um, so this is uh, what's what's happening after sunset. This is about um, twenty minutes after sunset, and you, you can see the uh, the sky. Um, the color is beautiful, right? Uh, it is no longer the the kind of the boring blue sky. It actually has all these ambient lights uh, coming uh, uh, coming from the afterglow. Um, so just imagine if uh, you were able to align an animal uh, with this kind of uh, sky color, it will be. I'm just looking back to see if there's a coyote <laughs> gonna pounce on me because I heard some some noise behind me. But uh, yeah, so if you 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 can align uh, animals in this kind of color, you can create a lot of uh, moody photos, right? So uh, so I want, but but then you may ask, like, but the Tin Man, uh, the light is gonna be so low, right? Uh, how are you gonna uh, nail the focus, or how do you get a photo that is not too noisy, not too grainy, right? Well. I'm glad you asked because <laughs> um, this is uh, what I'm gonna uh, show you today. So, uh, so let me put it put it down here. God, I'm just really going all out today, <laughs> just for you guys. So, um, just do this. Okay. So I'm in the field, right? And uh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes after sunset, uh, it is a little bit dark. But for me, it is just when all the a lot of the wildlife or birds are most active. Like for example, great horned owls, uh, uh, like all, all these uh, coyotes and, and foxes may come out. Like you know, so it is actually a very interesting time. And if you just go home, you will miss all these moments, right? So let me just share with you. Um, so by the way, like, if you guys enjoy what you're looking at, definitely uh, write down at the comments, and you will means it will mean a lot for me and uh, or, or you just want to say hi let me know so that I know I'm just not talking to uh, thin air we have no one watching so so here um, so this is um, a um, 400 2.8 so this is one of the tips is that um, uh, always use a lens that has a uh, big aperture uh, meaning a small f number so this is a 400 2.8 and if you have some prime lens that is f4 uh, those are the best for uh, low light photography and let me show you why so if i just um uh let's just pan it like this so you see that uh, this is the field right that i'm looking at right so if i just if there's an animal that shows up uh, <laughs> So if there's an animal that just showed uh, showed up right in front of me, uh, what's gonna happen is uh, I'm gonna expose uh, for for that animal in front of me, right? So let me just uh, uh, so what I'm using usually is um, auto ISO, uh, manual focus, uh, evaluative metering. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll explain it more. But let me, let me just uh, for example, if there's a there's a Coyote showing up, right? Or fox showing up in front of me, and uh, I just uh, the setting right now is um, uh, f two point eight, sixtieth uh, of a second, ISO eight thousand, and if I go for fortieth uh, of a second, I actually get uh, ISO four thousand at f two point eight, 
and um, so uh, 40th of a second, 30th of a second actually. So uh, you might say, Tin Man, you're crazy, right? Uh, how can you get a sharp photo with uh, this kind of shutter speed? Well, <laughs> if you haven't tried the newest technology on image stabilization and vibration reduction in those, those, these lenses, uh, you're missing out. So uh, actually when an animal is st staying still uh, and if you take a series of photos, maybe five or ten photos or a little bit more uh, continuously, you actually can get some really really sharp photos uh, when the animals is uh, st stay, staying still. And with ISO uh, 4000, 5000 and a 40th of a second, you can get pictures that you can print five feet, six feet, uh, gallery, museum quality with no problem at all. So uh, with this kind of capability, you are suddenly getting photos that most of the photographers are not gonna even attempt. And if you can capture uh, uh, some of those special behaviors or moments in this kind of light and this kind of colors, you can <laughs> create some stunning photos like that. And so I just wanna share with you uh, uh, this, this kind of uh, techniques that I use um, to, uh, to get, <laughs> to get uh, to get sharp photos um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and um, um, no 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 uh, so Conan so uh, I, I just tested so um, um, I, I just actually meet her on on the grass and uh, with uh, exposed to the right actually with a perfect exposure it, it is about ISO 4000 uh, f 2.8 at about 40th of a second or, or 50th of a second so uh, those are totally usable and indeed I have a lot of photos like that where the uh, uh, the noise is minimal and uh, the photo is super sharp, uh, and 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 one thing that though that people don't know is um, uh, yes, it is very difficult to get a sharp photo at 40th of a second. But right now uh, we should not forget that we are using a digital camera, so we have what 128 gigabyte of uh, space in it. So if you just take a, a ton of photos and if you just stay still and if uh, you just wait for that special moment when the animal may just stop you know uh, animals when they hunt and when they were observing they could stay so still that a, sh a slow shutter speed we were able to freeze their mo uh, movement uh, to freeze the photo completely so uh, with all these things aligning together you can still get some really really crazy sharp photos and because of the light and the, the light you know the, the sky and all these colors you can you can pick up all these uh, beautiful colors in in this kind of light and of course it is uh, risky uh you you might not get all the sharp photos and you may the, the focus may hunt but if you can get one photo just out of that while everybody had already gone home and all i think that is um, a really really um, uh, good uh, experience and uh, so i uh, i hope I, I recommend you guys to give it a try so let me know if you are willing to give it a try uh, if you have a lens that is a zoom lens where the f stop may be a little bit uh, at the f number may be a little bigger then you just need to um, even slow down the shutter speed at a, a little bit more to get a decent ISO um, and um, and then you just uh, keep shooting <laughs> that's the thing you have to uh, set the highest burst weight and then uh, just keep shooting and then hope that you can get a few shots that are sharp and usually I take I don't know like 40 50 photos and uh, within the first 10 or 20 I would get a really sharp photo on that and uh, if you don't understand what I'm talking about all this uh, auto ISO and uh, what my setting is in this kind of changing light like uh, during the last 15 minutes of sunsets the light can change all the time and if you use uh, all manual manual ISO and everything uh, you might miss the shot because you have to do all this uh, mid-tone uh, 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 spot metering and, and also uh, uh, and if you want to learn more about that I actually had that um, webinar that I just mentioned in the earlier um, live that you go to tinmanly.com slash webinar uh, there is a section um, in the middle uh, where you can learn my um, exposure techniques uh, metering techniques that is more suitable for unexpected actions for wildlife uh, so so the, the the key idea is that for birds in flight uh, the light shining on the bird is gonna be pretty stable 
because the the, the, the bird is flying in the sky and the, the sun is always shining similar light on that. But for wildlife, they are coming in and out of the shadow, they are coming uh, in deep bush, suddenly they, they, they jump out and then the light shining on them. So for those moments, uh, you don't have a lot of time to keep doing the, 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 the manual exposure. It is very difficult to tell how much light is gained when they're in the light and how much light is lost when they're in the shadow. So that's why you have to find a compromise. And I find that uh, manual plus auto ISO uh, is what you need. But uh, what I think is a lot of people still don't understand uh, how to really use it, especially in low light situation. And so yeah, ch check out my, my webinar. And if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, very good to see you guys. I hope you, you enjoy this kind of uh, outdoor experience, right? You see, you hear like the insects, uh, sound and all it's just just beautiful to be out there and uh, and just let me show you the sky so that you can spend maybe a few seconds with me look at that right look at how beautiful it is like the light and everything so um, you know this kind of ambient light um, it is actually a little bit darker than than what this phone is showing um, uh, like, like this is more 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 like it. It is pretty dark right now. Like oh, it's still kind of um, doing all, all this auto adjustment. But it is a little probably two stops darker of the light uh, than than what you see here. Um, but if you still you if you know how to expose to the right and how to minimize the noise, uh, once you capture a special moment, uh, that is um, where happiness is <laughs> okay so um, so thank you so much for um, for your info so this is not for the uh, for is it called what the thing of heart <laughs> like uh, this this is kind of new like no, almost nobody uh, do this kind of crazy low light stuff but uh, but once you master the techniques you can get a ton uh, more opportunities than just uh, regular uh, bright light photography and uh, and and uh, as long as you stay safe <laughs> in, uh, in, in the dark make sure to bring a flashlight and uh, some pepper spray <laughs> for your safety but uh, but anyways um, uh, I'll, I'll keep on sharing more of this kind of info and um, and yeah, so uh, I, again, I'm back to life. Uh, uh, had some food poisoning or whatever that I uh, I was in bed for two weeks, uh, sleeping 20 hours a day. Um, and right now I'm all good, I think. I'm probably 80%, not all, but 80% uh, better. So I may actually go out to take more photos in the next few days, but I'll be safe. <laughs> so, <laughs> because I know you guys still want to see me, right? Um, okay, so, Hope you guys have fun and I will catch up with you guys uh, later. So uh, if you are watching it in replay, uh, definitely also leave your comments here. Let me know what you think about this uh, low light photography. Let me know if you have tried it. Uh, let me know what kind of camera or lenses you, ha you have been using. And if you are not successful in getting low light photos, if you are, your photos are too grainy, if you are, you are having problems of autofocus, definitely leave your comments here and I'll try try to uh, answer them because uh, for myself uh, I had a lot of uh, I make all kinds of mistakes I, I'm I'm pretty good at making mistakes uh, very quickly and uh, in a disastrous way so I kind of know uh, what kind of uh, uh, solutions uh, you may need so um, so and then I, I would love to discuss with you too so so yeah so leave your comments here 